Hello, my name is Heath Hayes and I'm the principal here at Cambridge Middle School. About three years ago, my assistant principal, Steve Taylor, and I realized that our students do not understand how great of a community Cambridge really is. And so we start out trying to establish assemblies that would bring not only people from Cambridge, but more importantly, graduates of Cambridge City Schools back to our school to talk to our students about what a Cambridge City Schools experience meant to them. We've had some great speakers, we've had some great assemblies, and out of those assemblies, we've been able to build some more community pride and school pride with our middle school students. This year, COVID-19 has changed how we can do those assemblies. However, we still believe in each and every one of those assemblies. So therefore, with the help of some staff members and some students, we are able to have Friday focuses, but they will be done virtually. Our first Friday focus is about to play, and I promise you will see a Cambridge graduate that has absolutely given back to our community, but more importantly, has helped to instill Bobcat pride and community pride for our students. Enjoy. Good afternoon, students. My name's Tom Davey. I'm a proud Bobcat, born and raised in Cambridge. I graduated from Cambridge High School in 1966. As a matter of fact, I graduated with Mr. Hayes' father and Mr. Feldner's father. So uh, we're all proud Bobcats. Uh, I've been asked to come here today to talk to you folks about community service. And I am a huge fan and proponent of community service. Uh, I'll tell you by way of my background that uh, about a month after I graduated from high school, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and went to a technical school. It was a, a one-year program to be a dental technician. And when I graduated from that, I came home. I was home for about a month and went into the Navy for four years as a dental technician. And when I got out of the Navy, Uncle Sam was nice enough to put me through college, so that was great. So I was gone about 11 years, and I moved back to Cambridge, and I've never regretted it. This is a wonderful community. We have an excellent city and county administration. We have an excellent police department, excellent sheriff's department, uh, excellent fire department, excellent school system. It's just a great community. And uh, I don't think there's another community the size of Cambridge that has a great a city park as Cambridge does. It's just wonderful. But I have always as you said been a proponent of community service. Now I don't know if I would have the same zeal for it if I lived in a big city as I do living in Cambridge, uh, but I do love Cambridge and, uh, and, and I love to help out. Um, I am a member of the Cambridge Lions Club and so, just so you know that there are international service clubs. As I said, I'm a member of the Cambridge Lions Club and we have uh, clubs all around the world, including China. This year's president is from China. Last year's president was a woman from Iceland. Uh, our primary function is uh, eyesight. Uh, we provide eyeglasses and eye exams for people who need some financial assistance. Uh, we recycle used eyeglasses. Uh, we collect those. We send them to Ohio State University's optometry department where they read the prescriptions. Uh, they sort them by male and female and children and adults and that sort of thing. Uh, and then we also support the Diabetic Support Group of Southeastern Med because diabetes is a leading cause of blindness. Now the other service clubs that are notable are the Kiwanis Club and the Rotary Club. And I'm sorry that I can't tell you exactly what their functions are, but I know that they have a, a calling of their own. So it's, it's a great thing to be part of. Um, there's a lot of other things that I have been involved in in Cambridge in terms of community service. One of the first things, I was on the board of directors of the American Red Cross. Um, my wife and I actually were part of a group of people who started the hospice program, Hospice of Guernsey, which is a very important program that helps people with end of life. So if someone is terminal, helps them with medical and, and social and psychological and spiritual support for their end of life. Um, I was also on the board of directors of the Guernsey County Senior Citizen Center. Several years ago, with a couple of my good Lions Club brothers, started a 5 and 10K run called the Cambridge Downtown Classic. And I'm not sure how I came upon that idea because I've never been a runner, uh, but I knew we had running clubs and they used to have some events and they hadn't for a while, so 
I was looking for something that would be good PR for my business. I was in the investment business. Something that's good PR for that, but also a nice community event. So I called my good friend Ron Guthrie, and again, one of my Lions Club brothers, and told him what I was thinking. He said, well, you need to call Chris Rocco, another one of my good Lions Club brothers. And so we came up with the Cambridge Downtown Classic. After a few years, we added a bicycle tour to it, where they, people, after they did the run, they would take their bicycle and ride out through Salt Fork and back. It was like a 25-mile route. So then we called it the Cambridge Run and Countryside Ride. Um, back in 2002, uh, another good buddy of mine, one of my high school classmates, lives in Quaker City named Bill Armstrong. We started Jamming for Johnson. And it is a musical event that we use to raise money for music scholarships. So any student from Cambridge, from Guernsey County, whether it be Cambridge City Schools, East Guernsey, Rolling Hills Schools, or even the East Muskingum School District, if they live in, Cam in Guernsey County, uh, they can earn a scholarship if they're gonna pursue music. Whether they want to be a band director, they want to specialize in musical instrument, whether they want to do voice or musical theater, uh, we give $1,000 scholarships. And we've given twenty-five dollars or $30,000 in music scholarships. Uh, Mr. Hayes' stepdaughter, Maddie Lynn, who is Miss Ohio, is one of our scholarship winners. Uh, our first scholarship winner was uh, uh, George DeLancey, who plays stand-up bass in New York City. Big time uh, musician. Um, local band director, I think he's down at Meadowbrook, uh, was one of our uh, scholarship winners. But it's been, it's been a good project. We also recycle instruments. We find that kids who were in band uh, and they go off to college and go get married and stuff like that, their horn or their instrument might still be at home in, in the closet. So we ask people to recycle those. So we recycled, I can't tell you how many musical instruments we recycled, but that's been a very good project and we're very proud of that. One of the questions that was submitted to me was about the Dickens Victorian Village project in downtown Cambridge. I'm sure you're familiar with that, that and the light show. Well, this is our 15th season for Dickens Victorian Village. And we couldn't do it without a lot of volunteers, people like me who believe in community service. Uh, we have at least 200 people who make this project work. Uh, we have a group of retired teachers who uh, do uh, the educational side of Dickens. Some of you may be familiar with that from when you were in grade school. Uh, they bring students in by the bus load. Uh, they split them into groups. One group goes up and down the street with the teacher looking at the scenes and talking about them, while the other half is in the classroom talking about what it was like to grow up during the Victorian era and how the mannequins are made. And then they switch places. So they've been a great uh, boon for us. And we have a welcome center on Wheeling Avenue uh, across from Carol Goff's office, uh, 647 Wheeling Avenue. And that's where we like for our visitors to begin their, their visit come in and they can hear the story of how the project started uh, and uh, we have a gift shop there uh, we have what's called the imagination station where you can borrow clothes that we have that make you look Victorian and then we take your picture for you that makes a great Christmas card picture um, so we have a lot of volunteers who work there and I guess I skipped over how it actually started a local man and his wife uh, he was a businessman he owned Robert's Men's store downtown and because of your ages, you probably don't remember Robert's Men's Store because, like I said, this is our 15th season, so we started this 16 years ago. Uh, but Bob and his wife uh, were looking for something that would draw people to downtown Cambridge and help our retailers uh, do well during the holiday season because that's the most important season to the retail. That's when they make it or break it. So they came up with the Dickens Victorian Village. Uh, Sue, his wife, was a school teacher in the Cambridge City School System. She was a big fan of Charles Dickens. Uh, they recognized that we have a lot of Victorian architecture in Cambridge, so they came up with the Dickens Victorian Village. Well, Bob is more talented than any man deserves. He went home and immediately started sketching scenes of what a good Victorian scene might look like. So every scene that we have downtown, Bob has started out with original sketch. Then he went to his wood shop and figured out how to make the framework, what I call the skeleton. And it's made so that it can be posed in different positions. Uh, and then he went down to the vocational school down in Buffalo and asked them if they would make some for him. <laughs> I think they made the first 100 of those skeletons. Uh, 
then he went to the art guild and asked them to make the heads, which is just a fire styrofoam head, and they use a product called cellular clay, sort of like a paper mache, and they make the heads. And uh, some of the heads downtown are made in the likeness of some individual. Uh, Father Christmas there by the courthouse is made in the likeness of Grant Hafley, who owns a radio station, who donated the light show. Uh, so that's that's been very cool. And what they do is they wrap the skeletons in a bubble wrap or carpet or something like that to give them a little bulk, and then they dress them. Uh, the costumes aren't treated with anything. The heads are, uh, but uh, it's been it's been very good. This year we've had to scale back a lot because of the virus. Um, we'll have maybe 10 tour groups come in by motor coach, where we usually have 50 or 60. So it, it's definitely been scaled back because of the virus. Some of our events have been scaled back as well. Uh, another notable volunteer that we have is Queen Victoria, another one of my high school classmates with theater experience. And she does a great job as Queen Victoria. And some of you may uh, remember her from grade school as well because she goes to the, to the grade schools and performs for the students. Uh, he also does some teas for some of our true groups come in. They do a Victorian tea out at the country club and she performs for them. Another big asset for us is what we call the creative team. These are the folks who work all the off season uh, tending to the mannequins. Uh, when we take them in in January, they'll give them about a month to thaw out and to dry out, and then they'll start assessing what each scene needs. Does the head need repaired or replaced? Does the costume need replaced? Is the platform still in good condition? Does that need uh, repaired or replaced? So these people work tirelessly the whole off season, making sure that our mannequins are fit for the next season. Um, it has been a great project for downtown Cambridge. Um, I remember in 2008 when we had a terrible financial crisis, uh, we had a lot of tour buses come downtown and the retailers recognized that, uh, that we saved their bacon. Uh, and it doesn't just benefit the retailers downtown. It helps our local restaurants and the hotels and the gas stations. Uh, so there's a lot of, lot of other businesses that benefit from, um, from this project. And of course the light show is just spectacular. Uh, I know that I'd be surprised if all of you haven't seen it at least once in your life, uh, but it's a spectacular light show. And I have heard at some point in time how many hours it takes to program the lights to dance to one song. It's, it's a phenomenal uh, undertaking. But it's, I mean, it is so well liked, it's ridiculous. Anyway, after the season is over, uh, oh, we also have a lot of volunteers who help us put the mannequins on the street and take them back. Uh, my Lions Club brothers are very good at bringing pickup trucks with trailers, flatbed trailers. We load the mannequins on the uh, trailers and put them out on the street or back in the warehouse. Uh, the last several years, we've had some of your football players uh, help us uh, unload them and load them, uh, as well as the girls track team has helped us load and unload them. So that's been a, a very big help. And we store them in a warehouse down behind Woodlawn Dental where Fireline Supply is. It's the old Universal Pottery Building. And the Ohio Bridge Company owns that building and they've never charged us a nickel. So, they're very big, very big supporters of this project. Well, I thought another thing that might interest you about the Dickens Victorian Village project is some of our ancillary events. Uh, we do have trolley tours. We had them this past weekend, uh, 5th, and we'll have them again on the 12th. And it's a historic tour where they drive you around town and we either have a costume guide or a recorded uh, message that tells about some of the historic uh, places in, the, in and around Cambridge. Uh, we also have a cemetery tour every year. This is our third year of having one. And it's what we call a coming alive cemetery tour where a costume actor or actress portrays a person whose grave you are visiting. And uh, we've had some very interesting people uh, from Cambridge who are buried in Cambridge uh, who are significant in our history. Um, and we will be doing it again. We, we've got some other characters, and, and we do that in conjunction with the Guernsey County Historical Society. Uh, Rick Booth, who is probably our most notable Guernsey County historian, does the research on who we might portray, and it writes the scripts for the actors. 
And uh, we did our first year at Founder Cemetery across from where the municipal court used to be. We did our last two at the old city cemetery behind the Senior Citizen Center. And I think next year in 2021, we're gonna go back to Founder Cemetery because there's some people there that we wanted to highlight. Uh, we also have horse-drawn carriage rides, uh, typically on Friday and Saturday evening, weather dependent. Start about 5.30, about the same time that the light show uh, does. Uh, it's very quaint to go up and down the street in a horse-drawn carriage. And I think I mentioned the Victorian tees that we have, uh, and our guests are free to wear their big bonnets or dress Victorian or just come in their casual clothes, it doesn't matter. But we always have some form of entertainment. Uh, Queen Victoria is the most popular. She gives a very good presentation about her life. Uh, and um, uh, we've had the Cambridge Singers, we've had the Cordial Chorus, We've had some other actors come and perform for the Victorian Tees. Um, Queen Victoria also visits the grade schools. I may have said this before, but some of you, when you were in grade school, may have seen her. She comes and performs, and she's very good at uh, getting students involved in her performance. Uh, she starts by telling you about her flag. She says, well, you know, you have an American flag. I have my own flag. And she has a couple boys get up and hold her flag as she describes uh, the parts of her flag. And then Queen Victoria had nine children. So she also gets nine students to get up. And she tells them what their name was. She puts capes on them, little tiaras for the girls, and, and talks about each of, the, each of the children and about her husband, Albert. So she gives a very good performance in that and it's very, very well accepted. So we're thinking about some other events we might be able to have. Uh, in the past, we've had a music show at the Performing Arts Center. We called it the Dickens of the Holiday Music Show. Uh, we have had a parade on opening day, which makes us a little bit nervous. It's expensive to bring in some of the acts that we need to put on a good parade, uh, but it's also weather dependent. And my favorite is bringing the bagpipe band down from Akron, Canton. But bagpipes can't play if it's too cold because the tubes crack. So that's that's a an issue. But uh, well, we're thinking of some other events we might have in the future, so uh, be sure to come down and see the light show and visit the characters and attend some of our events. Um, I implore you to provide community service. Community service is very gratifying. And I know when you get to high school, you're required to do, I think, 40 hours of community service to graduate. And I think that's a great thing. So uh, don't forget to call us and see if there's something you can do for us. Even if it's only dress up in costume and go up and down the street and say hi to people. That's a big part of, uh, of this project. So uh, take that to heart. Uh, so when you go to college, you want to come back home, we'd love to have you. If you go somewhere else, you'll know you're some kind of community service you can find that would be beneficial. So thank you for your time.